A very warm welcome to today's edition of our learning tutorial. I'm JK of JK Clothed. Today we're going to learn how to draft cut and sew this beautiful dinner wear you see right on your screen. This is a dress with a corset beneath, which also has drapes from the underbust all the way to the top. It also has some embellishments at the center piece area with drapes also on the skirt. If this is something you'd really want to learn how to do, please do stick and stay and let's do it together. Before we can do this beautiful style, we first would have to draft our basic bodice. In case you'd want to learn how we drafted this basic bodice, I would put the link in the description box so you can check this out. With the basic bodice done, I have traced this same thing into getting these pieces. This is the front pattern and that is the back pattern. We are going to modify the front basic bodice first. We would first move four and a half inches from the shoulder to nipple point upwards. Bear in mind, this is not same for everybody, but then it does work for most people. At this point, you may want to open the dart, that is the shoulder dart you have here, to equal to the dart we have at the waist level. And so from here to here is giving us two inches. And so we don't get two inches from the top here. Measuring from this to that point, we get approximately one inch. And so we would move half of an inch to this side and half of an inch to the other side. We will draw a line to connect this to the tip of the shoulder that. Next, we'll move two and a half inches from the shoulder to bust point line or the shoulder to nipple line upwards at center front. We'll then mark the cleavage interval. And so if you want one inch, you would be doing half of an inch. This is because this part is on fold. Now, we'll draw an arc to connect this very point we've marked here to the top here. You do this in a curve. From this underbust dart point, we would move towards the center front by one inch. Then, we will draw a line to connect this point to that point. This would be in a concave. The next point would be to mark your nipple to nipple interval on this point. And so the nipple to nipple is seven inches divided by two gives us three and a half. And so you'd mark the same thing from this point towards the side seam. We would as well mark one inch from this side of the underbust that towards the side seam, just as we did for the other side. Now using a similar arc as we had here, connect this to that point. From this point, we are to connect this in a curve and into the armhole as we do for a normal cap corset. We are to connect this dot to the point here, but then it shouldn't be this straight. It should be in a little curve. Then we'll connect this to this point. That is, you want to assume some uh, roundness We repeat same for the other side. We'll go ahead and cut this. There are two methods of doing this. 
you can either cut this whole cup as one or you may want to leave it uncut so that you add this and that piece together and so in this art tutorial we are adding the two together this is what we have we're going to fold this that onto that that so this whole piece becomes one So we are done with modifying the front. We'll go ahead and do that on the back as well. We'll start by cutting off the top here. The next step, we'll fold this that onto the other. Since we want the center back where we're going to do the lacing, to be a little shorter would we'll move from the top here downwards by about one and a half of an inch and draw a line to connect this to the side seam making sure that you first take out your seam allowance when it comes to the down part too we just want to make it a bit shorter as well so we'll just elongate this line to touch the center back line as we see here. Meaning we're going to cut off this part and the top part and we'll do away with the excesses as you see here as well. This is what we have left of the back. This is the center back and that is a side seam and so with the back completed and that of the front we we'll would go and then cut the interfaces with it when it comes to the back we are not adding any seam allowance to it because it has been added when we were drafting the basic borders when it comes to the front we are going to add seam allowances to the parts that were supposed to be together which we have cut them separate and are now going to join and so we are adding the seam allowance to the down part here and to this side but not the top when it comes to this other piece too we're adding the seam allowance to the side here since it's going to join to this the down part since it's going to join to this part and this part since it's also going to join to this part we will exclude the top just as we excluded the top for this side. When it comes to this very one too, we are excluding the top here, but then we are adding the seam allowance to this very portion and that part. This part is on fold, remember. This being the center front, it's on fold. We are using this method to cut our interface. That is the violin in our instance and then we we'll use the same thing to cut our lining and same to also cut our fashion fabric. This is the back pattern. This is the side. We've added our seam allowances. And this is the cap that comes first, very close to the center front. This is the center front, as I said earlier, this is unfolded, so we have cut this and then opened it apart. So this is what we have when it's opened fully. Because the front has this design, which makes it a bit darker than the other side. That's how come I'm putting on this lace. But with the dress itself, the lace has some designs like this. And so this is what we are using for the dress itself. But because the specimen is very small, the flowers would not be able to show that much. And so I'm using the plain area to design this very one. We'll go ahead and cut the net into the same shape as this. To avoid it from moving apart, I would put it on like this and then stitch all around before I cut it. Right. 
Right now, we're going to stitch the various parts together. We we'll pick this and then we'll match it with this other one. We're going to stitch here and then we'll stitch here. Repeat same for the other part. After we're done with that, we would create notches and then we top stitch. For the dress itself, what I did was that I used this as the lining, meaning the interface was used to fuse the lining. And with this, a bone was placed from the top to the bottom here leaving one inch which is half beneath and then half on top because this is a specimen i'm using this as a fashion fabric itself repeat same for the other side then we would place this onto that side we are going to insert this whole thing here I will do the same for the other side. A notch is being created at this point to allow for a turn at this part. And so we're going to stitch from the top all the way down here. So this is what we get after we have fixed the two. What I did in the dress itself was to have sewn the same thing. And then we put the two together to finish this part and turn it to the good side so that the interior is also finished neatly. We're going ahead to do that of the skirt. What you do is that you use your normal skirt pattern. That is a normal pencil skirt. Once we have our front skirt already cut, we would place our drapes on it. We first would have to shift it towards this direction where we have a bunch of it on this side. This is because we are going to fold it this way. We'll fold it on, making sure this part is smaller and then we're leaving a bigger pleat as it comes to the side, the down part. And we iron this as well. Since our drip has covered the skirt, we would pin this down turn it to the other side and then we trim the edges. Quite unfortunate, the video paused as I was doing the drips. What we did was that after we had pleated the fabric on top of the skirt we had beneath, we just pinned it and then we have trimmed the edges so that the draped fabric and then the fashion fabric beneath you know, all have the same size. After we are done with this, there's one thing we should also bear in mind when you are doing draping of this nature, especially since it is placed on the hip area where the model would be moving up and down. If you don't make this a bit tighter, it means you'd have the drapes, you know, opening as and when you walk. We don't want that to also happen. And so what you do is that we would have to make the drip a bit shorter than the skirt itself. That is just about half of an inch. That's quarter on this side, quarter on the other side. The intention is to make the drip fabric a bit shorter than the skirt beneath so that the skirt stretching would also hold the pleats in place very well for us. With this said, I'm going to unpin this side and take off about half of an inch.
So this is what we are talking about. We are pulling the draped part to cover up the other side of the skirt. We are going ahead to secure this by stitching and then we we'll do the same for the other side as well. For the dress itself, what I did was that because I didn't want the pleats to also fall apart as you walked, I used this hem tape and then aligned it on each of the pleats and ironed it. When you do that, it makes it stay. But this is a dummy, it wouldn't move about and so I will just do it like that. Right, we have gone ahead to stitch the edges, thereby securing the drapes of the skirt itself. We will then go ahead and attach the top to the skirt like this. And we do the same for the back patterns as well, where we would also attach the skirt to the tops, as you see here. Then repeat same for the other side. For the strip, we'll cut a strip like this. It should be long enough because we are going to cut it into pieces. We have two strips at the center front here and we'll have two on the side. So we need to get a strip that is long enough to serve these purposes. I'll stitch on it and then we'll cut them into the needed pieces. Next is to cut the fabric for the pleat. And so you'd want to measure from the underbars all the way to the desired length. With mine, I choose two and half. After you're done with that, you cut a square like this, making sure that you get your two and half after you have finished the edges. And so you're going to finish this edge and finish that edge as I have done in this instance. We've just folded this and that inward and then measured the two and half we want and cut all along and so it should be in this arc form not straight after we are done with this we are going to knitting this edge use our hem tape to also secure this part if you don't have a hem tape you can also stitch on it but before we do that we would have to pleat this edge making sure that it's the same as the point from this very portion to that portion. It shouldn't necessarily get all the way to the side seam, no. You just want it to be able to cover the brazier cup area like this. We are pleating one inch at most. For the dress itself, I used two inches. And so in this, because it's a specimen, I'm doing about three quarters or about one inch. Meaning when I fold this pleat, the total should amount to one inch or three quarters. And so we have about one inch We repeat same for the other side. After this, we are going to fix our strip onto this. How do we do this? We first would have to cut, after we have folded this part in, we would cut the head off. And we are going to flip this backwards. We are putting this inside and we'll flip this to the back. And stitch on. With a strap attached to the pleat, we are going to fix it underneath the bust. We'll repeat same for the other side. 
Next, we attach these two strips also at the center front here where the cleavage is. Bear in mind that for the dress itself, this was attached here before the lining was sewn to finish the edge and turned inside. When it comes to this pleat to the same thing, the pleat was sewn on this before we fixed the brazier cap side of the dress. Next, we are going to sew the back to the front at the side seams for both the left and right to make sure that this seam line and that of the front seam line meet it is appropriate to shift the seam allowance of this part towards one direction and the other towards the opposite direction so this one is coming up here the seam allowance for this is going downwards so that it's able to lock at this side and then we stitch we are securing the middle first. And so we get it to meet perfectly well on the same line. We are going to hem the edge and then we close that of the center back as well so we stitch the center back line and then we insert our zip if possible and so after we are done fitting the dress on our model we pull the strap all the way to the back and then we secure it we do same for the others. And so we are doing that and then we see the final outcome. And wow, so, so, so beautiful. Thank you so much for watching from the beginning to the end. I'm very, very grateful. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Be a part of us. Please share. Don't forget to keep your comments coming. See you next time.